All right, so moving on, let's disable the water line for now so that we can start developing a bit of the terrain here for you guys. And to do that, we're going to go up here to the biome tab. And as you can see, we have one biome here, but we can add many, many, many more biomes. And the way I understand it is that all these biomes are right now all a child biome to the main terrain. So this first slot is the main biome for the base terrain and everything else is a child actor. You can move a child act actor into any other number of biomes and they will stack different effects whenever you do that. One thing that I was curious was the way it is now versus the way that I'm thinking is if this biome here, which is a child actor of this biome, will this biome only directly affect the this particular parent biome or will this biome also affect everything that's down because i presume that all the biomes from um, bottom to top is what the hierarchy is so the last biome will be like we've seen it in world creator 2 the one that's technically on top of the other biomes or is this structured from top to bottom where the hierarchy of what's on top is literally on top of this list well, the third biome, that red one, uh -huh. um, only is affected on the area of the uh, of his parent biome. So okay, only perfect. This one. Right. So, which actually means that this that, that the red biome is inside the other biome. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it does not leave the borders of the other. Gotcha. Think of it like um, that um, green greenish biome could be a desert, and the red one could be an oasis. I see. I see. And. Thus, the red biome here won't have any direct effect to the other two biomes here down below. Right. But the green and the other one, they are bordered, so they are blending uh, into each other. So that green and the second one, mm, these, they are beside each other. Yeah. These two right here. Yeah, so right. they, they share the same level of, of hierarchy, basically. Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. And also, if we were to click on the parent, the main parent biome here, we can see one thing that I was curious about was these percentage values. I um, assume that this wasn't um, finalized yet, but the each one of these percentage values represents um, the next level of biome. So this percentage, right. this percentage graph represents this sort of color, and this percentage uh, slider represents this green biome. Coincidentally, yes. while I have the green biome selected, the percentage value represents blue blue value here, so far and, and so right. forth. So this percentage value, I'm also assuming, is the weight value uh, or the opacity of that biome that's being affected on a parent level. So if I were to, say, decrease this first slider to, say, 50%, then only 50% of this biome and this biome, since it's the child biome, will be active basically yeah these ones uh this means that uh that the other biome will have I, I mean the green biome would now um be larger than that biome that you just decreased right okay so you're you're basically even though that these two biomes here are side by side in the hierarchy you can control right. that even further by changing their hierarchy by these percentage values yes perfect yes, yes. This means the area of the biome, yeah. Mm. But 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 this is just a prototype thing here because I don't like how 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 it's been um, spread right here. You know, it's mm -hmm. we need to we need to find a better more more visual solution <laughs> for this because actually you don't know which which biomes really affected. You have to mm -hmm. check the list each time. Yeah, I definitely understand that. So yeah, everything that we are showing you guys here today is still obviously under development. So w there's not going to be. Um, any concrete positioning just yet. Um, I'm sure some things are pretty concrete and others not. So things like this will are still up in the air on where they'll be. Um, but the the workflow and the idea of what these two are going to be will still be implemented in some form or fashion. Gotcha. And of course, whenever you select each of these biomes, you're presented with a series of biome settings here, some of which you're probably used to, like the level step sliders here, which are no longer called sliders, um, quote, end quote there. They're, it's more of a dynamic graph. So 25, 50, 75, and 100% 
of each of these can be dynamically changed in a much more intuitive graph. I think this sort of method of changing the um, either the fractal noise properties or the you know the level steps of each of the levels for the filters and the biomes is really nice in this sort of um, layout because it's really easy for you to understand it a bit further. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, there are also some 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 quick things where if if you click quickly on the on the on the highest number, it just goes straight up. Or if you click the lowest at, at zero. Ah, yeah, it just goes down. Then yeah, you there can we go. also multi select everyone and turn down, or you can set every every of these at uh, uh to one level to one value. Yeah, and more tricks coming then. Yeah, just just making it more comfortable to use. Oh yeah. Instead of changing each one each one by <laughs> but each this one is, after this another. Is, this is more fun, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So yeah, definitely a lot more functionality. I'm sure are coming. You know the the general strength of the biome, the the seed levels. The you you can even yeah. offset the the details some. Um, some more functionality is definitely going to come, and we're going to explain all that, but uh, not in today's episode. So aside from these settings and going back to the um, hierarchy graph here. So in each one of these biome selections here, you'll notice that there are a few icons to the right. The first icon is where you'll add and distribute all of your different filters. The second icon is materials. And then we have objects, which is coming at a later date. And of course, the X, which will delete those biomes. So let's take a look at adding a few filters. So we have a filter area here and a rules area here. And the rules area is really similar to your filter distribution properties that you're used to in World Creator 2. But in this case, which we're going to get to further in a bit, they're stacked a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and go up here and add a our first filter. And then we're just going to go down to erosion fluvial. Now, all of these are stacked in a list. Um, is there any other way that you were going to organize the this filter list? Or did you want them to be... I mean, I'm, of course, there's going to be many more filters added to this. So if they were still going to appear in a list like this, then I assume for UI purposes, it would almost be like a scrolling effect uh, down here. Or will there be categories like we like we see in World Creator 2? So maybe it's still a list, but we click on a category and it expands out into a further list. Or will we see all the filters available um, at once, but maybe also categorized in some other way? It would be a mix of both. <laughs> so if you click here, um, that list becomes wider. Um, imagine that drop-down field, I don't know, about four, four times in width. And then you have the categories. And beneath the categories, you will have the filters. And those will be also scrollable, uh, scroll, scrollable <laughs> um, if there are too many filters in a, in a, in a category. Okay, perfect. Because I know I know that's one thing that uh, people like to see. That's a really quick selection feature. Because we reference, you know, go to the the effects right. category, go to the erosion categories. Yeah, and having a really nice wide um, window here, drop down window that showcases all the filters is fantastic to hear. Yeah, we'll also have a real time preview. I mean, if you hover over a filter, uh -huh. it won't be transferred automatically to the terrain. To the, to, to the original terrain, but you will have mm -hmm. another viewport within the list mm -hmm. uh, where it shows the current terrain. And as you hover over the filters, um, the filters are um, instantly um, applied and you can see that as a preview window. Oh, that's great. So in that preview window, is that display going to be, will it take you know the same amount of uh, processing power to display that preview based on the, the way the terrain looks as it would as if you were to apply the filter? Like, I wonder if the preview window would not be as high of quality, basically, you know, as it would be applied to the physical terrain. Yeah, well, um, the preview window will be smaller. Uh-huh. And with that, we also can reduce uh, the the uh, the quality. So no no worries about that. The, the performance um, won't change that much. So it won't hurt. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, just those optimization workflows really yeah. make a big difference. Yes. All right. So the first filter we're going to try here is the erosion fluvial filter, and you can see how fast that applied to the terrain. Let's just uh, 
let's grace at that for a moment. So I'm going to hide and unhide this. And it's just <laughs> ridiculously fast. And of course, the yeah. a lot of those same settings that you're used to in World Creator 2 are still here. There may be a different order to things like the general strength is down here in the bottom. And you can dynamically increase or decrease it as you see fit. And as well as the level step graph now is applied here, just as we saw in the biomes breakdown. So touching now, since we have our first filter here, let's look at how the rules work. So now that we've had one, we see that there is one rule already that's called biome. If we were to hide and unhide this, we'll see that we're basically also removing the filter itself as well as there's a slider here, which is also resembling of a uh, percentage value or weight value of how much this filter is going to be applied uh, to the terrain. So if I were to decrease this from one down to say zero, then nothing is taking effect or back up to one, it's having the full effect of whatever settings that you set here. So it's just another level of um, adjustments. So just like the biomes hierarchy, we have the rules hierarchy, and that's organized just really similarly the same way. So if I were to add a new distribution option, a drop down menu in the same way as the filter menu lets us see all of the basically the filter distributions that we want to apply to this specific filter. So if I were to say select the slope value, I could then select the slope box here and I can adjust the slopes the high and low point of that slope, as well as the blending range in between by these um, high, these wider values here. And this is a really nice um, effect because I really like how in this version, as opposed to World Creator 2 version, the high point of the, the or the, the highest point or the lowest point is clearly stated and the blending is happening between the two high points instead of outside of the two high points which is a better way, I think, of understanding how the range sliders work, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Additionally, each one of, if I were to add some more, so let's add a cavity and let's add a, a height here. So additionally, we can remove these child actors and place them to be similar to parent actors. So they're all even in the hierarchy or just like with the biomes, we can drag one of these and move into another distribution rule and it becomes a child actor of the parent actor. So it's another really nice way of having much more diverse way of adding many more ways of distributing, even if it's the same type, like I can have multiple slopes, can I not? Yeah, you can. You, yeah, you can have multiple slopes and you can have one slope affect just the cavity area and you can have another slope handle just the biome as a whole or you can have it handle, you know, different other things. So to remove these real quick, we just click and drag off into the terrain space and under each one of the filter rules, we have an effects tab here. So this is what's really cool is if you were to click on this button, you can affect that distribution rule based on other types of operations or ways of blending into the effect. Like one of my favorite ones is the flow distribution, which we'll get to once we cover textures. So there's many ways you can blend these rules. So it's almost an endless way of applying distribution to not only filters, but textures. So let's go ahead and just remove this slope because I think the base uh, settings for the erosion fluvial filter is just fine. And let's go ahead and add our second filter. And in this case, we're gonna add one of my favorite ones, which is the sediment complex. I absolutely love this filter in World Creator 2 and it's even enhanced more in World Creator 3. Maybe not for its settings, but maybe for its, you know, the quality of it on the terrain itself. And let's just change some settings here real quick. I want the quality of this to be maxed out and let's lower the strength ever so slightly to around 77. That looks pretty good on our terrain. Let's hide and unhide to see the effects. Now don't worry, this looks pretty drastic at first and you might think this is taking way too much, but the next filters are gonna make a little bit more sense to what we're doing. So we're not gonna add any rules to this. I think the way it's distributing across the terrain is just fine. And for this last filter I wanna add in this particular biome, is an erosion fine filter. Now this is under experimental right now, so I'm sure it's gonna be polished a bit later. So we're gonna add this 
And I think the settings for this is also just fine because the next biome that we're going to add is going to further enhance all of these three filters a bit further because we're going to add a child biome to this main biome. Um, maybe try to reduce the, the highest level steps for a sediment complex filter. This will take, uh, take out of uh, the washed off look. Yeah, just reduce it a little bit. But Let's just see this. You're right. Maybe the so next one. It flows better. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That actually, thanks for that suggestion. That actually does look a lot better. So again, what he had me do was come back to the sediment complex. And if it looks a little too washy like this at first, you can simply reduce or change some of the quality in the level step graph here. And I think his suggestion of reducing the two highest uh, levels here down a bit can help um, you know, brighten up the areas that the erosion fine is grabbing. So this is what it looked like prior to uh, me making that effect. And if I lower these two a bit, you can see we're adding a little bit more detail in this area that the erosion fine is really gonna grab and uh, showcase those erosion edges uh, really well. So thanks for that suggestion, uh, Stefan.